It has been said that in Twilight Struggle, you need to know the cards well in order to play well. Well, we're going to take you through every card one by one, and we're going to help you become a master at Twilight Struggle. This is Legendary Tactics. This card is very thematic to the Cold War, but its effect, while seemingly very advantageous, needs to be balanced carefully against the overall goals of the players. Let's take a look at how to use it well. The event itself is about as straightforward as it can get. This is an early war neutral card worth one operations point that, if played for the event, advances you one space on the space race track. It's important to remember that this does not count as an attempt on the space race for the turn. And let's take a look at the space race track for a minute to look at the advantages that it provides. The first box you can advance to is Earth Satellite. It gives two victory points to the first person to advance here and one victory point to the second. You need to spend a two ops card and you need to roll a one to three in order to advance. The next box is Animal in Space. You need a two ops card and you need to roll one to four to get here and this allows you to play two space race cards per turn until your opponent catches up and enters the space themselves. After that we have Man in Space which awards two victory points to the first side to enter but none to the second place finisher. It requires a two ops card and rolling one to three. Then comes Men in Earth Orbit. Again you need a two ops card and a roll of one to four. This is quite a powerful stage to be at because the opponent must choose and show their headline card first, allowing you to then choose an appropriate headline with full knowledge. After that, it is Lunar Orbit. It is worth three victory points to the first side to enter it and one victory point to the second. It requires a three ops card and a roll of one to three. Next is the Eagle or Bear has landed. You need a three ops card and a roll of one to four to advance here. Being in this space allows a player to discard one held card, which is potentially quite valuable. Then comes Space Shuttle. It is worth four victory points to the first side to enter it and two victory points to the second. It requires a three ops card and a roll of one to three. And finally, although it is rare for anyone to get here, the last space on the track is Space Station. It's worth two victory points to the first player to enter it and zero for the second. It requires a four ops card and a roll of one to two. It allows the player to take eight action rounds, which is obviously a huge advantage. If you're ever going to get the most value out of the captured Nazi scientist card, this is it. For either side, grabbing two victory points by being the first side to advance on the space race track is going to be one of the main advantages of this card in the early war. Typically though, this advantage is short-lived as the other side will likely advance at some point recouping one VP. Beyond that, advancing to the third space on the space race track opens up the possibility of spacing a second card in the same turn, which would also be very attractive. In fact, if you get this card in hand, you may want to space a card early in the turn to try and get a jump on those victory points and then use captured Nazi scientists to advance to animal and space right away. But do remember that every action round and every operations point is valuable in the early war, especially for the US player. Players might think that one operations point isn't much, but a play into Malaysia by the US player, for example, or playing one influence into India to set it up to be controlled in a future action round is a valuable use of a single operations point. That one operations point can grant you access to new parts of the board. And if the US is under containment or the USSR is under Brezhnev doctrine, or if you use the ops to play into Southeast Asia, the same turn that Vietnam Revolts has been played, the ops become even more attractive. As a headline, it works pretty well, especially if you really don't have a better option or if you're afraid of defectors canceling your event as a Soviet player. As noted earlier, this card doesn't use up your space race card for the turn, so make sure you time things properly. You don't want to use it to advance on a space that's easier to advance on naturally. For example, use it on one of the spaces where you only advance on a 1 to 3 instead of a 1 to 4. There is a risk that playing this card to get ahead in the space race opens up another card like One Small Step, 
which can boost your opponent to a victory point box ahead of you unintentionally. The other aspect of the space race that newer players don't consider is that the ops requirement for the space race goes up the further you move along the track. It is a clever mechanic that makes the space race a double-edged sword. This means that you can enjoy the benefits of advancing along the track, but the downside is that you might not be able to use the space race to get rid of a nasty enemy two ops event. This can be especially tricky for the Soviets who otherwise have to trigger awful events like Voice of America or grain sales to Soviets among others. We're going to cover the space race track in great detail in a future video. Stay tuned for that one. I have to mention a funny scenario that I came across in my research. It's a move that's interesting but not likely to be recommended by anyone. It's an opportunity for a player to advance five spaces on the space race track in a single turn. So if you're in the starting square of the space race track with the, in this case, the USSR uh, one space ahead of you in Earth satellite, then in the mid war, if you had the card one small step, you could play that to advance two spaces on the track followed by captured Nazi scientist. And then if you spaced two cards and rolled well, you could get as far as lunar orbit in a single turn and that would be uh, very lucky and if you do succeed both times you've just achieved one of the fastest technological advances in history congratulations so for either player getting this card in the early war is basically an event worth two victory points but you may want to play it for ops if the opportunity is there this is our analysis of the Captured Nazi Scientist's Early War event card in Twilight Struggle. We hope you got some value out of this, and we also hope that you will like and subscribe, and tune in next time for the next uh, in our card-by-card -card series in the game Twilight Struggle. This is NATO with Legendary Tactics.